students. Hope you were fine and also you are having a nice time. We are lost right now. Uh, we would like to begin this term with a famous novel called Round the World in 80 Days. Now you might say that we are living in the 21st century and we have helicopters and aircrafts. It's not a big deal. In fact, you can travel, uh, travel around the world in less than 80 days. But I bet you, if you were to live in, if you were to live 150 years ago when there were no airplanes or helicopters, you would say, excuse my language, hell no. You would say that's impossible. But at the same time, you would say that this is an impossible task. Because in those days, an adventure involved a number of days to travel from one country to another required 10 to 15 days. For example, if you want to, tra if you, if you want to travel from the USA to England, it would take 20 days in ships and trains. So in those days, traveling around the world in 80 days was an impossible task. But before we read the novel, I want you to learn or consider the life of the writer Jules Verne. Around the World in 80 Days is written by Jules Verne. If you look at the screen, this man, Jules Verne, was called the father of uh, science fiction. A science fiction involves scientific theories or, uh, and also scientific tools. Now this man, Jules Verne, was born in 1828. He was born 187 years ago. When he was young, his, his father wanted him to be a lawyer, but he refused to do that. He wanted to be a writer. So he left his profession, he was a stockbroker, he left that profession and he, he started writing dramas. But the dramas failed and they failed miserably. But he didn't give up. He started writing science fiction books about scientific adventures in which you need scientific theories and tools. Right? So Jules Verne was popular, was one of the most popular writers of his age, but he is still popular today. Why? Because of this, the most amazing fact that Jules Verne had a powerful prediction or a powerful prediction skill or imagination. Jules Verne predicted things that happened 150 years after he wrote about them. So one of them, one of them that he wrote 150 years ago and then it came true was the idea of helicopters. Can you look at the screen? That's Verne's imagination of a, he of a helicopter. What well, you see, a ship is flying, but the ship is fitted with a number of rotors or blades. Right, so the ship is flying. That's Verne's imagination of a helicopter. And this is today's modern version of helicopters. The big difference between Verne's helicopters and today's helicopters is today's modern helicopters have less or fewer rotors. In Verne's helicopters, we had maybe 20 or 30 rotors. Now, Verne, Verne uh, wrote the novel from the, from the Earth to the Moon. He predicted that mankind would reach the Moon one day. So he wrote the book From the Earth to the Moon. Now you might say, what's the big deal about it? Because the Greeks also had a dream of traveling to the Sun, right? But I tell you what, Verne, Verne showed how to get to the Moon. And after, 104 years after, when the Americans launched the Apollo, you would see that Verne's plans and the plans of NASA were almost similar. Can you look at this image? What do you see? That's what we call a spaceship. That's Verne's idea of a spaceship. This uh, spaceship was made of aluminum. At that time, it was recently discovered and recently uh, used uh, uh, materials and Verne decided that his spaceship would be built of aluminum. Why? Because of two things. Number one, aluminum was, is strong and at the same time it is light. So as we are discussing, 
Burns characters, the characters in Burns book, they decided to build a spaceship made of aluminum. And 100 years after, NASA also decided to build a spaceship made of aluminum for the same reason, because aluminum is strong and light. Now, another interesting fact about Verne's spaceship is Verne calculated that if you want to reach the moon, you have to run at a speed of 24,500 miles. And it will take four days to reach the moon. Guess what? In 1969, when Nepal launched from the United States of America, they also, uh, the spaceship launched at a speed of almost 24,000 uh, miles per hour and it would take it took actually almost four days to reach the moon thirdly uh, Verne predicted that the only country that could actually launch this uh, spaceship was the United States of America and in 1969 it was the United States of America which launched the uh, spaceship called Apollo from Canberra and finally, another uh, intriguing fact about Verne's spaceship is Verne's space, spaceship splashed down in the Pacific Ocean. It landed in the Pacific Ocean. And in 1969, the spaceship of NASA also was, was splashed down in the Pacific. So these are intriguing facts, or what should I say, predictions that came true 100 years after of Jules Verne's writings. Now, if you look at this screen, you'll see uh, Verne's other ideas, for example, his ideas uh, of a balloon. This idea he provided in his book called Five Weeks in a Balloon. And this one is Verne's imagination of a submarine. And this submarine is actually quite similar to today's nuclear submarine. Right. Now these are Verne's popular books, From the Earth to the Moon, Journey to the Center of the Earth, Five Weeks in a Balloon, Around the World in 80 Days. If you think that your novel, the first novel you're going to read, Around the World in 80 Days is amazing, you might be interested to read other novels as well. Right, so we are going to start the novel called Round the World in 80 Days. I want you to guess what the title suggests, what the title of the novel suggests. Round the World in 80 Days. Exactly, the, the title is very plain and clear. It suggests that some characters, maybe one or more, more than one, are going to have a travel around the world in 80 days. Now, traveling the world in 80 days doesn't mean traveling each and every corner of the world. What it means is from one end to another, from one end to another. Secondly, at that time when this book was published, it was an impossible task, it was a challenge. So the title also poses a question, is it possible? Is it possible to travel around the world in 80 days? Now, I want you to look at the cover page. What do you see? In the background you have a train and also some heels and you have three characters two Europeans and one Indian woman. Well, what does this suggest? What does the cover page suggest? Is there any connection between the title and the cover page? Well, you can easily guess that these characters will be in your book and when you travel around the world, it is very usual that you will meet new people. So in this in the cover page, you can easily see that this Indian woman, I mean, the, the, the characters might be going to meet some new characters, new people from different cultures. It's very usual when you're going to travel around the world, you will find new people from new different cultures or nations. All right. Now, we are human beings and we have mistakes. But the things that Jules Verne mentioned in his uh, books dazzled the world. People thought, wow, maybe he was a prophet. But I'll tell you what, 
Allah has mentioned almost everything, all these things that Vern mentioned 1400 years ago. In, 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 in the Quran, if you kind of look at the screen, you'll see Allah mentioned in Surah An Nahl, uh, verse number 8, He says, These horses, He was talking to the Arabs, He says, These horses, mules, and donkeys have been created for you to ride, to travel. But in the future, Allah will cause the creation of vehicles that you do not know. So Vern talked about helicopters, he talked about airplanes, but Allah says he will cause creation in the future that you do not know. The Arabs of that, at that time, they can't perceive, they can't uh, understand. So of course Allah is talking about all the transports of today's versions. Secondly, in another chapter, verse of the Quran, Allah says in his Surah Al Rahman, verse 33, He says, O company of jinn and mankind, if you can pass beyond the regions of heavens and the earth, then pass. But remember, you will not pass except by Allah's will. What it suggests is Allah has indicated that one day humankind or mankind is going to conquer the space. So traveling to the moon was predicted long ago before uh, Jules Verne predicted. Alright, so that's all for today's lesson. We just discussed about Verne's biography, we talked about the title of the novel and at the same time the cover page and we tried to build a relationship between the title and the cover page. And in your homework you have to write some questions, you will be given a worksheet and you have to answer the questions based on the title and also the cover page and kindly read the first two chapters. So that's all for today's lesson. Assalamu alaikum.